Dear colleagues, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this minimally edited surgery. This is a cataract with grade 5 nuclear sclerosis, very hard cataract. The microscope is Lumera T with stereo coaxial illumination, and th that is why we are having some red glow, though the cataract is very hard. In such cases, it is always better to use tripan blue dye and stain the anterior capsule and do a large excess. My aim is to do a rexis of about 5.75 to 6 millimeter. The anterior chamber is filled up with visco, 2% SPMC. And now I am using, trying to use uh, iterator to do rexis. Now see, I cannot pierce the uh, anterior capsule with the tip of the iterator forceps. And there is wrinkling and uh, radial spoke like sign. It means the jonule is very weak and I need to use a sharp needle and uh, cut the capsule. Even with this sharp needle, the whole uh, uh, lens, the capsule nuclear mass moves, means generalized weakness of the jonule. Still, I have to do a large rexis, though I know that if I go to periphery and if I include the jonule, it will be very tough. So, I do, did a large rexis and at, uh, at 2 o'clock, I went to a periphery a bit to make it a kind of oval rexis. It means the uh, 2 o'clock, 8 o'clock axis is longer than 11, 5 o'clock axis. Hydrodissection is done and antichamber is filled up with visco. And now the tip of the needle is exposed a bit more in such cases to deliver more ultrasonic energy. And in such cases, I usually do my submarine chop technique. And if the submarine chop technique fails, then I make a deep crater at the center and do crater and chop technique. First attempt is submarine chop technique. And this, the tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. It goes through the nucleus with full energy towards the opposite equator. It crosses the hard part and reaches near the opposite equator and then I use the chopper to get a deep, a nice crack. I sculpt, rotate 180 degree, come to the other side, hold on hemineucleus with vacuum and separate the other hemineucleus by using the chopper. And now I am using the same technique, going through the substance of the hemineucleus and dividing into two large pieces. And now emulsifying this fragment and to get a space for movement of the other pieces. And now I emulsify this piece and now see the concept of using the epinucleus as contact lens in such cases with weak genule. I detach the epinucleus from the nucleus and use the epinucleus, epinuclear shell as a contact lens over which the, this is the epinuclear shell just under the chopper. Now I come to the other side. I did not remove the epinucleus, let it support the capsule for some time 
and now I detach the epinucleus from this heminucleus and get only the nucleus and emulsify the nucleus. I have divided this heminucleus into two pieces and using the epinuclear shell as contact lens over which the nucleus is being emulsified. Again, just watch. I am holding the nucleus, detaching the epinucleus by the chopper and this epinuclear shell is being used as a protective contact lens and protecting the posterior capsule. So, in this is the epinuclear shell remaining now and the nucleus has been removed. Now, I use the stereocoaxial illumination, we get more depth perception, we can make out at which level the phaco tip is and using little lower vacuum, I am removing the epinuclear shell. Thus, we could manage this case uh, quite well. So, in this through this video, I want to pass the message of using uh, the epinuclear shell as a protective contact lens, protect, protecting the posterior capsule in such cases. We have seen the posterior capsule, uh, we have seen generalized weakness of the jonule in this case during uh, epsilorexis. We could not pierce the center of the capsule by the tip of the uterator forceps. Even with the sharp cystitome, uh, it was mm, difficult. So, in such cases, it is more important to protect the posterior capsule because in such cases, the posterior capsule may come forward at any time. There is, it is called trampolining of posterior capsule. Posterior capsule uh, comes uh, forward towards the faculty very uh, uh, suddenly. So, such cases uh, we need to protect the posterior capsule and we can use the epinuclear shell if we can detach it from the nucleus and we can use the epinuclear shell as a contact lens. Uh, by this time, the cortex has been cleaned by the Simco cannula. A Simco cannula is a very safe instrument. And now, I am enlarging the main wound because I am going to use a big cartridge and I am using, uh, uh, doing hydro implantation of, you no, know, hydro implantation may be dangerous because uh, the Jonule is weak, uh, suddenly there can be jonular tear by the haptic. So, in such cases, it is better to fill up the bag with visco and implant the lens by uh, uh, under visco. Uh, place the uh, lens haptics nicely in the capsular bag. No, in this case the haptic, the uh, trailing haptic is not yet in the capsular bag and I am using this uh, hook to place it in the bag and dialing the lens to orient the intraocular lens nicely. Uh, why two hooks? Because the genuine is weak. Bimanual rotation is always safer in patients, in eyes with weak genual. Now, I am irrigating the antechamber, irrigating the capsular bag with Simco and removing uh, quite a lot of visco, but it is not total cleaning of visco. We will use bimanual irrigation aspiration. Why not bimanual irrigation aspiration from the beginning? Because bimanual irrigation aspiration works better when the visco load is less, particularly if there is viscote 
or if there is uh, chondroitin sulfate kind of thing, then um, hyalocote, viscote, then uh, if the if there is less amount of viscote, then bimanual will work better. Otherwise, the aspiration passes may get clogged by the viscoelastic substance. And after thorough cleaning of visco, we do the necessary steps and close the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your uh, surgical skills and hope you will uh, like this idea of using epinuclear shell as a protective contact lens uh, for the posterior capsule.